Hey guys, thanks for tuning in. It's Dirt Bike Channel. I'm your host, Kyle Brotherson, and I wanted to just show a little bit more about our conversation here with Kevin Egbert down at Moto Experts in Spanish Fork, Utah. What we were talking about was what to do now that your cylinder is off the bike. Maybe you've had some problems like we did with some scarring and some things, and the cylinder might need some work. What do you do now? We're going to talk about that. Yeah, so typically when we're doing a top end rebuild for a customer, and the cylinder, uh, the plating is worn through the cross hatching. Uh, we'll send the cylinder out um, to either Millennium or Power Seal, and uh, they'll do the replating. And what they'll do is they'll size the cylinder specifically to a piston that they have on their shelf to ensure that we are getting the correct piston to cylinder wall clearance. Theory. So what are, what are the next steps then that we need to do? So this cylinder is shot. I mean, it can still be replated, um, but it is scuffed to the point where they're going to have to do a little bit of welding to repair those uh, deep grooves. So we'll send this off to our replater, have them size it there to a piston. Um, and then when we get it back, we'll double check, verify with our dial bore gauge and our caliper micrometer um, to ensure that we have that specified tolerance as called for in the Honda manual. And so will they, they'll, we'll use one of their pistons, the one that they sized it for. Yeah. Okay. And they usually have, you know, they'll have Vertex, Wiseco, Pro-X. Okay. So uh, you, you select and you say, I want this piston or whatever. They'll pull one off the shelf and then make sure that they fit the, fit the cylinder to that exact piston and then send it back to Correct. you. Correct. Cool. And they'll usually even set your ring end gaps on the piston. I just wanted to point out that we, after looking at our cylinder, we decided to just get a brand new cylinder uh, because of some of the circumstances where it had, been, it had been repaired a couple times before. And we felt like with the turnaround time and with a little bit of extra cost uh, for just a new cylinder, we just opted for to go for that route. But uh, not everyone is going to do that. It might be more cost effective for you to just have your uh, cylinder replated. And then what are the, we're going to need a gasket kit. What are some of the other things that we're going to need to put um, this back together? Yeah, just a top end gasket kit. Um, and then uh, I'll, you know, we'll take apart, clean the intake, the carburetor, just to make sure that if any debris was in there, that it's not going to contaminate or harm the new top end. Um, and then we'll also do a, a bottom end flush on that crank. Okay. Okay. So, so tell me what you've noticed on the head. We were talking about the coloration and thing. Go, go for that. Tell me what you think. Yeah. So as far as I can see, I think the air fuel ratio was good. Um, you know, the the color of the spark plug was good, a nice, uh, a nice chocolate brown. Doesn't look too lean or too rich. It doesn't look too lean or too rich. It looks like the Electron was doing its job. Um, it's a pretty uniform color here, which a, is which is what you want to see, right? Yeah, and more importantly is you don't see any signs of that detonation. Uh, if you haven't seen it before, it looks like dozens or hundreds of little tiny chisel marks um, from detonation, meaning the air fuel mixture will combust before the spark plug ignites and then you have two flame fronts uh, colliding into each other and it's a violent um, event that happens but uh, it looks like everything was running great uh, it looks like they had it resurfaced uh, the last time it was done i'll run it on our test plate um, just to ensure that everything is still nice and flat before we bolt it back up People always talk to me online about squish bands. Can you talk a little bit about what, what they're, explain, explain what that means and how that fits together as far as our cylinder and our head? Yeah, so the final step before I bolt the head on uh, for final assembly, I take a piece of solder, a thick piece of uh, rosin core solder that can compress, um, and I'll lay it horizontally um, in line with the wrist pin on top of the piston. Um, and we'll bolt the head on, um, you know, all six of the nuts, we'll torque it to spec, and then we'll just push the Kickstarter through so that the piston comes up, compresses that solder, and then comes back down. Um, and then we'll remove the head, remove the solder, and then we can measure the distance, the clearance between the top of the head, and, or the bottom of the head and the top of the piston. Um, when you, have a squish smaller than a certain amount, uh, you start needing to look at uh, using some race gas um, just to avoid that detonation. Um, but most of the time we're setting a squish that you can run just a 91 pump fuel, 
without any uh, without any danger of detonation. Fantastic. Okay, Kevin, so tell me a little bit about what we have to do to prep this to get it sent off um, to have it worked on because we can't have any of this, any stuff on this, right? Right. So you don't have to worry about hot tanking it or making it meticulously clean. Uh, all we're worried about is removing everything that we don't want them to lose. Uh, so we'll extract all the head studs, um, remove the power valve assembly, and then if you didn't remove the exhaust flange, you want to pull that off. Um, you know, you're, you're locating dowels on the bottom of the cylinder. That's important to remove also. Um, but other than that, you know, remove the power valve, uh, the RC valve bracket, and that's about it. How long does that normally take to get from a company? I mean, obviously, maybe about a week or so to get it back? It depends on the season. When, you, when race season is getting into full swing, they, uh, they can get backed up. So unfortunately, this time of year might be that case. Uh, but if it's, um, you can sometimes pay for an expedite fee if you tell them, look, this is my race bike. I have a race coming up in a couple weeks. I need it back. 90% um, of the time, they'll work with you. You do have to pay an expedite fee. It might be a hundred bucks, 150 bucks, but uh, you know, in, in most cases, it's worth it. What's the ballpark cost of getting the cylinder um, uh, fixed up the way we need, a, need it to put it back in? Just ballpark it as a general consumer. So on a, a normal cylinder, if you've just kind of worn through the cross hatching and the plating is getting thin, uh, you're typically looking at about 250 bucks uh, just for your standard replating. In this case where there's some severe scuffing, uh, they may have to do some light welding on the cylinder, um, which it's not, uh, it's not a ton more, but you'd be looking at around 300 to 350 plus shipping costs. Interesting. Wanted to thank Kevin Egbert for doing this video with us and for helping to get this bike back up and running. As I mentioned before, we ended up with a new cylinder just because we'd had to uh, helicoil some of the some of the studs um, and just some different things that had happened in in the past. So we decided to get a new cylinder, but you might not have to do that on yours. So anyway, this bike is going to be given away. Just wanted to make sure that everyone is aware of that. We've got the bike up and running, and she is good to go now. It will be given away with the sweepstakes that I'm doing on the 2019 Husky TE300i. So we'll, we'll be giving away two bikes. And all you have to do is visit dirtbikechannel.com. Go over there on March 1st through April 30th. I, have, I will have all the details up there for every $5 you spend on my site. It will get you entered into the drawing for this bike and the Husky. I'm super excited about it. If you want to support Dark Bike Channel, you can go over to um, Patreon. That's a good way to support us. You can use the parts and affiliates links that are on dirtbikechannel.com and down below in the description. You can do that. And I just really appreciate all of your support. And again, for uh, the support with Moto Experts here in helping us get this bike back up and running. You can check out their website. There are links below, or you can just go to you know Google uh, Moto Experts in Spanish Fork, Utah, and you will find all the information for those guys. Really, really good. Uh, they're really, really good to work with for suspension and engine and all these different types of dirt bike needs. They also sell dirt bikes, so you should check them out. Anyway, that's pretty much it. Until next time, we will see you later.